Uh, so I'm Josh, for those of you who don't know uh, who I am, and uh, I started a YouTube channel along with buying a, a piece of property about, I guess, five or six years ago. It's been, been six years now. Uh, really uh, doing this and taking people along and sharing the experience that I've had. Uh, I'm on 150 acres in North Carolina. Um, that's just kind of been my goal. I had no idea how to run a camera. I had no idea how to do, how to run a sawmill. You're gonna see that here in a minute. I had no idea how to do all this stuff. Um, and I uh, just kind of jumped in head first. And when I screwed up, I told you what I did wrong. And if I hired somebody and they did a bad job, I told you, you know, what to look for. And, uh, uh, and it'll continue on. So uh, it's been through uh, tough times. It's real life. It's, it's uh, my wife and I, we got married. We bought this piece of property. We're no longer married. Uh, what happened there, create, you know, life, life happens. So uh, we all just keep, keep plugging along best we can. So we've got 30 cows now um, and getting ready to start the next leg of the fencing project. We've got about three and a half miles of fence on the farm now. Probably have two more miles of fence to go. Big building project going up, nothing like this. Oh my goodness, this place is insane. You guys haven't seen a quarter of it. I mean, this is like a hiccup of it. Way back in the back, I mean, how many miles of uh, parts? Three miles of parts shelving. Three miles of parts shelving back here. Insane, insane. So big thanks to Neil. Uh, a lot of us that, that do uh, YouTube type videos or Facebook, YouTube, I guess, who follows on YouTube and who follows, okay, who follows Facebook? So. There we go. So Facebook gets a lot more of the day-to-day -day stuff going on on the farm. I'll do a live stream almost every day, going out, feeding the cows, talking about low impact on the land, regenerative farming, trying to, trying to bring back this piece of dirt that literally this table had more soil on it than my farm. I mean, it's just not, we don't have topsoil like you guys have out here. So uh, uh, where's the, who drove the furthest to be here? We got some Virginians. In here, who, who thinks they drove the furthest? We got two hours here, right? Yep, got two hours. Anybody? Two? Okay, good deal. Well, this is awesome for, for Neil to put this on. Uh, wealth of knowledge when it comes to tractor stuff, uh, for sure. Uh, trying to get me over to the Kubota side of things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but do you guys have any questions, you know, being that, uh, and please, it, when we get done talking, come on up, shake my hand if you're worried about the COVID thing. Uh, I, I gelled my hands a thousand times today already, but come up, shake my hand or whatever, ask any questions you might have. Anybody have any questions about all this? How do I afford it all? Uh, <laughs> What's been your biggest challenge us? What would you do over again if you were to start? Okay. So he, he asked, what the, what, what's your name? Rich asked, what, what was the biggest challenge uh, on buying a piece of property like this? And, uh, you know, starting at the, at the beginning, and the way I ended up with my property, I'm a registered nurse. I, I, I grew up on a farm. I had no idea that I would be doing that. And standing here, right, it's just like, pinch me. What's going on here, you know? But knowing how to buy land and, and how to navigate that process was, was pretty difficult. Um, knowing the right moves to make uh, was one of the most difficult things. And also, um, bringing a city girl to the country uh, didn't work. It just didn't work. Uh, it, that's it. Sometimes it does work, sometimes it doesn't work. But uh, I, I'd say the most difficult hurdle that I've had is the financial end of things. Like, how, how do you buy all this equipment? I mean, it's, there's no secret on, on my farm. Um, there's probably $150,000 worth of equipment there. There's $200,000 worth of fence there. So, you know, what I did was just saved up money and worked really hard and found this niche, this crazy niche of social media to be able to share what I'm doing and earn a living at it. And I'm earning a living 100% on social media like, like many others, like Mike Morgan that'll be here in a while. And I, I think Tim, Tractor Time with Tim is you're earning your living on social media, right? So the biggest hurdle was finance. I mean, it, it really was. Uh, 
Worked really, really hard. My wife and I both worked a lot of long hours in the hospital. She was a nurse, I was a nurse, and we paid off our land. The land isn't very expensive where I live. In North Carolina, we bought most of our land for under two grand an acre. So, man, I mean, if you could buy land for that, it's, you can't get it now for that. But, uh, and that was just five, six years ago. So that's the biggest hurdle, uh, figuring out the finances of all this. And just being blessed with, uh, with talking about what I'm doing, sharing these videos, and it opened so many doors, uh, like with the fencing, with the tractors, with meeting folks like Tim and Neil. Um, it just, the social media thing just opened so many doors. Um, and it seems a little geeky, and I was a little geeky with it for quite some time, still am. Um, but uh, typical evening when you'd be sitting in front of the couch, uh, sitting in front of the TV on the couch, I'd be sitting in there with earbuds in, like figuring out how do you edit? Like, I don't know how to do this, what am I doing? And you gotta be able to fly a drone and drive a tractor at the same time. There's a skill set. I mean, <laughs> so no drone shots on the farm with, with me or somebody else flying it. It's me on the tractor with the drone controller right here hiding, pretending like I'm not flying. Like, there's just uh, a lot of stuff. Any, any other questions about what's going on on the farm or anything? We're in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains, so uh, just the first set of mountains uh, uh, are right there. I'm actually on the first hill, uh, so uh, right north of Greensboro, North Carolina. It's about six hours south of here. So. You call it a hill or is it a it's a hill, pretty much. Uh, but if you walk to my neighbor's property, which is you know half a mile away, you walk out there, you can see nothing but flat. And you look this way, and it's nothing but mountains. So it's. Uh, what, what town are you? Stoneville. Stoneville. Stone, like stone, like throwing a stone, like Stony Ridge Farm. So Stoneville, North Carolina. It's the first town you hit if you're driving 220 south into uh, North Carolina. So, yeah, but yes, ma'am. With so many farmers getting out of the dairy business, yep. what possessed you to start one? Or aren't you going to sell your milk? What's, what's your vision? So she's asking about uh, so many farmers getting out of the dairy business. So it's a beef operation, what I'm doing. Um, so it'll be all, all beef cows. No, not really maybe one dairy farm within a hundred mile radius of where I live. And I know dairy is taking a huge, huge hit. We we're talking about that out there a minute ago. Like uh, anytime I, I just want to stick a, a piece of paper on every soy milk cabinet in every grocery store, like support the farm, you know, support these farmers. But uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. And even the beef industry, I mean, it's tough to make a living at it. My goal with this entire thing before I started being a YouTube dork um, was to earn a living, a modest living on the farm. I wanted to make 60,000 bucks a year off the land. That's what my goal still remains, uh, is to be able to earn a living off the farm and to live a good, clean, quiet country life. So, but it's never clean, it's never quiet. It's just country, <laughs> so. Any other questions? Anything? Uh, what, what are you, what are you growing on your farm? So just raising cows. All this land, so you can see out here, this is a live stream. We need to switch videos. Can we? Yeah, a what? I got a mic. Oh, I got a mic on. There you go. Um, <laughs> so uh, what, what we're growing is just grass right now. Just trying to rebuild the soil so there's no topsoil. The farms in North Carolina were all over farmed with tobacco. And tobacco is a really uh, intense crop to grow. Basically all, all you're doing is plowing the rows and throwing the, uh, the fertilizer to it and turning it under. Plow it, turn it, plow it, turn it. So all of our topsoil is in the Cape Fiver, uh River Basin. I guess are we in the Chesapeake River, Bay, uh, Chesapeake Bay? So like a lot of topsoil around here winds up in the Chesapeake Bay. So. Uh, the biggest challenge is to take this. What you see here w wasn't fields when I bought the property. So five years ago, that wasn't a field. That was a, that was a trees about this big. It was an overgrown, worn out old farm. So, and the channel, if you go back through the years, it takes you from cutting timber to clearing land, to planting, to what we're trying to do now is no fertilizer 
trying to let the cows take the land back. So we're rolling out hay and everybody, I see the look on his face. No fertilizer, ah, where are you going? You know, throwing money at the land is not the way, in my opinion. Uh, and as I continue to build the farm, you can watch it. The things that don't work, I'll show you. The things that do work, I'll show you. But uh, I think I'm getting ready to roll out a bale of hay here. This is not, this is not the typical video. I'm typically, uh, this is a live stream, I think. Do you have an idea what, what proportion of your day is farming and what proportion of your day is YouTube? Yeah, so running a, the social media business, and it is a business, uh, it, it, running that takes about five hours, six hours a day um, in the morning. And then, you know, from the time I hit the ground, like this morning, I stayed in a hotel over here. It was the first thing I did, picked up my phone, YouTube, 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 trying to figure out what's going on on the channel, answering comments, you know, working through what the next video is and driving up here. I mean, that's part of it too. So the farm portion, uh, I'd say is 40 hours a week, 45, 50 hours a week. And then the YouTube stuff is probably 30, 40 hours a week too. So it's a lot. Um, you guys know if you work the land, you know how much time it takes to do anything. Double the time it takes to do anything when you shoot a video. Uh, so, but it's fun. I mean, I assume all you guys are here because you love the land. You have a love for the land and animals and uh, crops, tractors, toys, all this fun stuff. Yeah. So. You said tobacco is the tobacco industry is kind of going down. Uh, it's, I don't know a lot of the history of the tobacco industry there, but evidently the government gives you shares of tobacco that you can grow, and a whole lot of people have sold off those shares. Um, so people are aging out. You know, most of the old the farmers, uh, the average age of a farmer is over 60 now. Most of the farmers that were raising tobacco back in the day, the old timers, they're in their 80s now. Um, so all the farms are growing up, and that's, that's how I ended up with this piece of property. It was two overgrown, worn out farms that just nobody put the work into. So, um, man, I wish we could change that to the sawmill video that I was doing the other day. Um, Peanut industry, is that more to the east coastal? Yeah, yeah, and I'm not into the row crop thing. I don't, I just don't do, I, I, here's the thing, when I, with a 150 acre farm, you can't make any money growing, growing any type of crop, in my opinion. It may be pumpkins or something like that, you might be able to, but the reason I'm called Stony Ridge Farmer is because under the ground about this deep, it's all rock. I mean, if you go turn that, man, you'd be picking up rocks for 10 years. Uh, I, I pick up, I make a deal with myself. I'm gonna pick up 100 rocks every day, and that's what I do, walk out and pick up rocks all day. You guys probably know about that too, so. Um, but yeah, so if any of you guys wanna meet, shake hands, whatever, welcome to circle on around and if, any more questions? Did you ever figure out what happened with the cows the other day? I saw that video that they were spooked. Yeah, yeah, the cows got spooked. I think a coyote uh, or a pack of coyotes got in there with the cows and didn't hurt them or anything like that. And you gotta think a 45 pound coyote and a, a 1600 pound cow. Uh, we're not calving or anything right now. We've got a donkey in there to help protect the cows, but uh, we'll see how all that goes. Uh, I have uh, every night at sundown and all night long, man. I don't, are there, are there a lot of coyotes around here? No? Yeah, every night. It's, I mean, you just hear them howling in this corner and that corner. I mean, they're just everywhere. So, uh, not to the point where you're worried about going outside, but uh, they're out there for sure. Uh-oh, now we got the sawmill stuff. <laughs> so, anybody have any more questions? Don't be shy. I tell a story. It's just about, yeah, tell a story. Tell a story. I, I think it's having the opportunity to spend time with one another. Uh, I don't know what, we went out to dinner last night mm -hmm. and I, you watch these people on YouTube all the time and I think it's interesting to know that who is who they are in person, right? Um, when Josh arrived here the other day, he was walking in the front door and there's a, a gentleman trying to come in for the evening sprayer meeting last night that had a ticket dementia. And Josh comes in, helping an old gentleman in, and I just, it's, it's, you can see a character of a person in videos and I can tell you that that character can be real in person too. So um, I think that's interesting to see, right? It's, there's, there's a connection to people when you spend so much time watching them online and that kind of thing. And it's, it's cool to see people in real life being who you think they are. 
Yeah, I pulled in the parking lot and there was this fella and he'd been sitting out in his minivan for like, I don't know how long. And he's like, my knees are cold. And I'm like, I thought, I was like, man, does this guy have a little dementia? What's going on? You know, I couldn't quite figure it out, but I was like, well, I'll help you in. Come on. So I was basically carrying him. Neil was looking at me like, is that Stony Ridge Farmer? And who did he bring with him? Yeah. Well, that's the nurse in you too, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what comes out, right? When, yep. uh, and things happen off camera too. Absolutely. Yeah, still here. Cool. Now, there's another guy here I want everybody to meet. Purple Collar Life. Purple Collar Life. So if you're uh, if you watch YouTube stuff, check out Purple Collar Life. Nice guy. Went out to dinner last night. Me and Neil were a bit more festive, <laughs> or I was more flirty anyway. <laughs> uh, We'll be around uh, if yeah. you have questions. It, it, the point of today is just to socialize, right? Uh, have a good time introducing you to some new people. So everybody will be out hanging around the showroom. Uh, Mike Morgan and Tim Marks will be up here this afternoon. Um, and then I'm helping run a uh, compact tractor clinic here in a little while. So um, hang out, enjoy your day. There's food, the tours. Might be a little biased here, but I think the tour is pretty interesting. Um, take some time out there and walk around. Thank you for coming. Really appreciate it. Yeah, this place is huge. Oh, but don't forget to tell them. Uh, so I'm from NASCAR country down there, uh, and, the, and there's a, we'll have a zero turn, uh, der, what would you call it, a derby or a race to be more of a derby? On ice. We're gonna, we're gonna, we wanted to do something fun together while everyone is here, and there's an icy patch out front here that we're gonna have a little competition to race and some zero turn mowers around. Um, Maybe make a funny video. Not sure when we're gonna get out there, but if you see us all bolt for the front door and you wanna watch, you can come out and join us. <laughs> yeah, be there for the coin toss. So Mike Morgan should be here. If you guys follow Mike, or uh, he should be here any minute now, I guess. Oh, they're out there? Okay, cool, so. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>